Hello, everyone. Felipe here. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had an awesome weekend. So as you know, I'm here to keep you up to date with current market news and teachings. This is in no way, shape or form financial and investment advice. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Um, in this video, in this video, basically, I'm going to do a financial vehicle breakdown. Um, I have did one recently on the FCIUL, which is similar to the vehicle I'm going to break down on this video. Um, so basically, you uh, to give you the idea of what's available for you in the marketplace, right? So I'll go ahead and jump right into it. So in this video, I'm going to break down the Financial Foundation Index Universal Life by Transamerica, um, which is a uh, insurance um, vehicle, right? But it's a very interesting vehicle. I personally call this a Swiss army knife. And you might have heard it in the terms of the infinite banking strategy and in other uh, possible terms um, that is referred to uh, this specific vehicle. So this is um, provided by many different uh Providers. Um, in this case, this one is going to be um, Transamerica's FFIUO that I'm going to break down. FFIUO, which is abbreviation for Financial Foundation Index Universal Life. Um, so here, basically, uh, when you're looking over this stuff, you ideally always want to look at the little footnotes. The same thing when you're analyzing companies, you want to look at the footnotes because all the all the things you really want to know are typically in the footnotes of uh, the brochures, prospectus, and so forth. So um, an index universal life policy are not investments, are not an investment in the stock market or in the financial market index. Index account interest is based in part on index performance. So in this uh, specific vehicle, your money's not at the risk of the market. Um, which is a good thing if you want to reduce your exposure to volatility and the stock market in general, right? Because why have all your eggs in one basket, right? At, at the risk of the market. So FFIUL is basically um, for when you're planning for your family's future. Um, it, it, is, it, it is important to cover basically all your bases, taxes, inflation, market volatility are just a few concerns that can make it seem um, overwhelming. So the FFI, FFIUO has four key futures, um, death benefit protection, uh, growth potential, downside protection, and tax advantages, right? Because would you agree taxes are most likely to go up in the future considering the amount of debt that the United States has? Um, I was doing some research and crazily enough, um, since the debt ceiling was raised in June, the United States has added like almost another trillion dollars in debt. That's pretty crazy. Um, so the debt just keeps going up. And I believe uh, currently the GDP to debt ratio is in the levels um, of where it was in the 2000s, um, the dot-com bubble era. So um, basically... Uh, the purpose of this basically is the FFIUL may help your family replace the loss of income. That's where the uh, death benefit protection comes in. God forbid something happens to an individual that owns one of these vehicles. Their family basically has um, a protection on that scenario, right? To assist with a mortgage, maybe unpaid mortgages, child care, educational costs, or just to leave a tax a free financial legacy for your children or your grandchildren, right? Which um, is really, really um, interesting. So um, basically, these statistics go on how long it would take for your family to feel the impact of loss of the primary wage earner um, in the family, the breadwinner, um, and the, this kinds of breaks it down into different segments, right? So 44% a family surveyed will feel the impact within six months or less of the breadwinner of the family no longer being um, around, right? 57% uh, of families surveyed 
will feel the impact within one year or less. And then you have um, broken down 13% would feel it within one year, 8% within two years, 18% within five or more years, 17% have no clue. Um, but that is pretty staggering that 44% will feel it within six months or less, and 57% will feel it within one year or less. Um, and that could be pretty devastating to a family um, losing the breadwinner, right? So how your cash value can accumulate. When you make a payment um, or contribution, uh, they allocate the net premium to the index account or basic in interest account based on your instructions. So basically you have the options to um, allocate your contributions within the S&P 500, um, not within, but uh, pegged to the performance of the S&P 500, the global index, which is um, the, Euro, uh, the Euro stock 50, the Hang Seng for China and S&P 500. Um, and basically there are limitations on when you can transfer policy value between account options, but since transfers are tax-free, any earnings are protected from the erosive effects of taxes because taxes um, usually take a big chunk to any investment you're going to make, right? Or any investment that has appreciated through its life that is not tax advantage, a big chunk of that investment goes towards um, taxes, right? Uncle Sam. So uh, index descriptions, many of you guys might be very familiar with these indexes. So the S&P 500 is the top 500 large cap um, companies in the U.S. Uh, so you're basically um, using a benchmark that is the big companies in the United States. Euro stock 50, 50 large, co uh, large cap stocks from the European blue chip companies. Blue chip companies are usually high capitalization companies. Um, they've been around for a long time. And they um, are typically the more um, less risky uh, companies to invest within the market, right? Uh, Hang Seng Index, which is uh, the Hong Kong um, index, uh, Hong Kong, China, massive economy. They have many, many uh, well-known big companies such as Alibaba um, and other companies that are massive, right? Alibaba can be basically um, compared to the Amazon of China, right? And you have many other companies such as JD uh, and, and other companies within these this index, which are large, large uh, companies within the Hong Kong exchange. Uh, so no, net premiums are equal to gross premiums, paid less applicable premium expense charges, uh, monthly deductions, and index account monthly charges will be taken from the policy to cover the cost of insurance policy, monthly policy fee per unit charge and charges from any additional rider or substandard rating. So since it is an insurance policy, um, it is based on the classification of risk the insurance company gives an individual. Uh, so a portion of the contributions of the policy goes towards the um, cost of insurance. And then anything above the cost of insurance goes towards whatever uh, one of these indexes the individual chooses uh, performance and grows at the rate of return up to a cap of the performance of one of these um, indexes, but it is never at risk of the market. So guarantees are based on claims, on the claims paying ability of the insurance company. So with these vehicles, you wanna make sure your, um, your policy agreements is, and it's with a well reputable, strong financial institution. In this case, Nationwide is a monster of a company. They've been around for 120 years and they have never, as of to this date, have any um, financial um, issues throughout the life, which is pretty amazing for a company that's been around for that long, right? So um, here basically are the index account options. Uh, so in this case, hypothetically, someone chooses to have their contributions pegged to the global index, which is basically 50% uh, um, goes towards, uh, so 
So the percentage uh, change in the S&P 500 or the Euro stock 50, whichever is higher. So that's pretty cool. Maybe the S&P does better one year than the Euro stock 50. In that case, 50% is credited depending on the performance of the S&P 500. Or let's say the Euro stock 50 um, does better in a certain year than the S&P 500 in case that 50% um, is pegged to the Euro stock 50. So uh, that diversity is pretty interesting, um, right? So 30% of the percentage change in S&P 500 or the Euro stock 50, whichever is lower. So in the case that one performs better, that 50% is allocated to that. And then the 30% is allocated to the other and vice versa. And then 20% um, is allocated towards the Hang Seng Index, which is the Hong Kong um, Stock Exchange uh, big benchmark index for the economy over there. And then the other option would be just basically 100% um, S&P 500. So that would be depending on the performance of the S&P 500. Uh, so note that even though the interest credited to an index account options may be affected by stock indexes, index universal life insurance policies are not invested in the stock market or the indexes and do not participate directly in any stock or investment. So the contributions or the growth within the account is never at market risk because it's not really allocated to the actual indexes, right? They're just used as benchmarks. Um, so the basic interest account would basically be like a fixed, um, it's an option uh, of allocation, which is just basically uh, like a uh, fixed rate of return, typically um, 2% uh, rate of return. That would be um, for someone that is, you know, super conservative. In this case, in this vehicle, it doesn't make sense to be conservative because um, typically the insurance company uh, has two accounts or insurance company has two accounts They have a separate account separate accounts would be for variable products meaning uh, the uh, contributions or the investments um, within those vehicles are at market risk however in this case since this is an index product the contributions um, are within the general account of the insurance company which are never at market risk so it's two separate accounts that the insurance companies um, have uh, so basically, um, the global and S&P 500 index accounts have the potential to credit higher interest rates than the basic interest account up to their cap. So the, this specific vehicle here is capped. Um, if you don't like the word of cap, the FCIUO is uncapped, which I, I made a video on, on, on breaking that one down. It's on, on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. So monthly deductions and index account monthly charges along with the policy owner transactions such as loans or withdrawals will reduce the amount of excess index interest that is credited to the policy. If you take a withdrawal or a loan during a segment period, no excess index interest is credited on that amount. So basically, you have the ability to access uh, the cash value within these vehicles or specifically within this vehicle here that I'm talking about. However, um, whatever at, uh, cash value you withdraw or take a loan against from the vehicle, which is tax advantage, um, you don't pay taxes on, on that loan or withdrawal. Um, it is basically um, you're removing the power of the vehicle because now there's less money within the account that is working at the rate of return of whatever index you have uh, allocated your funds towards. So that's basically what that says. So the power of a guaranteed floor. Um, and then this comes from the uh, uh, the industry um, uh, uh, saying, zero is the hero, right? Sometimes it's better to make no money than to lose money, right? Because it's harder to come back from a loss than it is from not a loss, right? For example, let's say you lose $1,000. Well, let's say you invest $1,000, you lose 50% of that, that drops you down to 250. And let's say now um, actually $500, sorry about that. And let's say now you make 50% on that $500, you're up to 750. So it would take you 100% return to make up your loss. 
So that's where the uh, the term zero is the hero comes from in, in the industry. Uh, so basically the floor is a minimum interest credited to the account and ensures the end this account options will always be credited a positive interest. So basically the money within the, this vehicle is always um, growing at a positive rate of return, never at, never losing actual um, actual gains, right? Or the principal is never at risk of loss because the insurance company insures it. So avoiding a loss can be as important as realizing a gain. Um, and here, this kind of goes into what I was trying to say. For example, a 10% loss requires an 11% gain. So you lose 10% on your money, you need 11% return on to make to just break even. A 20% loss requires a 25% gain. You lose 20% of your money you, you to make to break even to where you were before that loss, you would need to gain 25% on that money. Um, so here that kind of gives you the idea or the picture. 10% uh, loss requires 11% gain, 25% loss requires, sorry, a 20% loss requires 25% gain and vice versa. A 50% loss, which is the scenario I was trying to paint, requires 100% gain. And the hypothetical $1,000 investment, you lose 50%, you're down to 500 bucks. If you get, if you gain or make 50% gain, you're only up to 750. So it would require you 100% gain just to break even again. So that's the beauty of not losing, right? And that's where his uh, zero is the hero comes from. So account floors and current caps. So uh, it may increase or decrease at the end of each segment, but it would never be less than the current interest rate of the basic interest account. Um, so here we have the different uh, caps and floors depending on the index um, that is pegged or the allocation of the funds within the account of the individual's choice. So the first one is the global index account, which has the highest cap. Um, and this is segment to segment, which I'll, I'll explain what that means. And it's a very interesting concept because it's basically dollar cost averaging within this vehicle. So in the global index account, um, basically any in excess index interest is credited annually at the end of the, each segment period. Uh, the cap for this is 13%. The floor is 0.75%. So worst case scenario, market is horrific, uh, does negative, your account is protected from, from loss and it actually grows a 0.75%. On the other hand, market is beautifully and in a certain year, let's, or within a segment, let's say hypothetically market is 20% and your account grows 13%. In that case, Transamerica receives the difference, which in this case would be 7%. That's how they're able to offer you the floor. That's the trade-off with this vehicle. They, they, they have you capped and in return, they give you a guarantee, which is the floor. Um, in the case of the S&P 500 index account, basically um, same segment to segment periods. In this case, the cap, in this case, the cap is 13%. Uh, so the account has the ability to grow up to 13% per segment period, and you have a floor of 0.75%. And then lastly, basic interest account, which is basically um, a, a consistent rate of return, uh, regardless of what the market does, which is 2%. Uh, so basically, the company declares an annual interest rate that would never be less than 2%. So basically, the funds within the vehicle can be allocated in either of these, uh, either of these three options. Um, so here we have a hypothetical example of how the index universal life works. So for example, um, the sample index universal life policy shown below has a 100% participation rate and a 13% cap rate with, the, of course, the 0.75% floor. 100% participation rate basically means um, whatever the percentage rate return is what you get, right? If it were a 200% participation rate, it would be double the, the rate of return, which um, some vehicles offer that. Uh, so here um, we have sample index and then sample IUL product, okay? So in... Example one, the sample index would be either the global index or the S&P 500, um, the 6% during the segment. Segments are from, from the month of the contribution to the next year, same month. 
Uh, so in this case, market does 6% on that segment. Uh, the, uh, the IUL does the 6% as well because it did not hit the cap. In the example two, market did bad that year, did negative 12%. However, here, the IUL is protected from that negative percent, 12% loss, and actually grew by 0.75%. Example three, market um, did very good that year, grew, it went up, or the segment during that segment did 18%. In this case, the IUL is capped at the 13%. So that kind of gives you an idea of um, different scenarios and possibilities that give you a picture of how this vehicle um, works, right? So based off of this hypothetical example, uh, your policy will be credited interested in the following ways, which is the examples I pointed out here. So this is basically the point-to-point -point, um, segments uh, breakdown. Um, so annual point-to-point -point strategy, the FFIUO index account options use an annual point-to-point -point strategy that compares the start and end date values of their respective indexes over a one-year period to determine the percentage of change in that index. If the results are positive, your account value may be credited with excess interest, index interest. If the results is negative, your account is protected by a guaranteed floor. Excess index interest calculation. So segments are components of the index account options to which net premium and or transfer policies are allocated. So there are up to 12 segments. That means there's a segment for each month of contribution, right? This is where basically the dollar cost averaging um, comes into play, right? Basically, uh, which begins on a, on a monthly policy day. Each segment lasts for 12 months, uh, index account segment periods. So the value of the index account option is the sum of its segment values and amounts pending op application to that segment. At the end of each index account segment period, Transamerica determines whether any access index interest earnings above the maximum, above the guaranteed minimum rate will be credited for that segment period that just ended. So the index change Percentage is determined by calculating the index value on the end of that segment date, subtracting the index value on that segment start date and dividing by index values on the segment start date. Uh, so here you kind of get the idea of how the formula is. So um, example, index value on segment end date. So in this case, let's say uh, the S&P 500, uh, is uh, at the end of the segment date uh, is at the value of $4,400. I'm actually using the S&P 500 index as an example in this case, minus index value on segment start date. So at the beginning of that segment, the S&P 500 was at $4,000, right? Per, per share or whatever. And then you divide this by the index value on segment start date, which is, uh, uh, the 4,400 and that equals a uh, 10%, um, which I, I got that wrong. So it was the 4,000 and equals the 10% excess index interest will be credited for that segment. So basically during that segment, uh, the account was credited 10%. So if that makes sense, I think it makes sense. Um, if it doesn't ask me, feel free to ask me, um, some questions. So tax advantages, this is the beauty of this vehicle. Um, and this is uh, basically a tax hedge, right? This is a uh, hedge against your life and a tax hedge, protection against future increases in taxes, right? Which are likely to happen. Would you agree? Um, so basically federal income tax, that free death benefit, life insurance proceeds passed to your beneficiary free of federal income tax station and and actually um it is also uh deducted from uh estate it's not factor in to the value of a person's estate this is not used in calculations of the total estate value of, of an individual so tax deferred earnings life insurance contracts um, meet special irs requirements that allow amounts credited to the policy 
value to be accumulate on a tax deferred basis taxes are deferred until the policy is surrendered lapse or when certain distributions occur so there are um penalties to where it can create a taxable uh, event for this vehicle and that would be whether the policy is uh, canceled surrendered it lapses uh, meaning uh, basically it's no longer contributed to and the policy uh, runs off, runs from cash value due to the cost of insurance uh, during that period of time or over distributions occur, right? And those are basically um, the events that will cause this vehicle to then uh, create a taxable event, um, which is not advisable, right? Because the idea for this vehicle is to have a tax advantage shelter. So anything within the vehicle is tax advantage. So tax-free transfers, transfers among accounts inside a policy are on a tax-free basis, tax-free access to the policy value. When the policy value is sufficient, you may request withdrawals or loans to use for any purpose you wish. You could use the funds to supplement your retirement account, help pay for children's education or unexpected expenses. Here's how. After the free look period, which is basically a period of 10 days, uh, I believe, where if someone decides they want to keep this um, vehicle after they have an agreement with the insurance company and the agreements in place, after 10 days, the agreement is fully um, in, uh, fully uh, enforced, right? Within 10 days, if someone decides, hey, not for me, basically they're allowed to use a free look period with no issues whatsoever and cancel the vehicle. Uh, the policy loan interest rates on FFIUR are generally lower than loan rates charged by banks. An amount equal to the policy loan will be credited at a minimum guarantee annual interest rate of 2% and interest rates will be charged as follow. So basically um, loans against the policy work this way, right? So um, from years one through 10, any loans taken within the account on the cash value that's grown within the account are, are have a 2.75% charge, but they're credited 2%. So that means the insurance company um, technically charges you 2.75% and then credits you 2% in return. So that leaves a 0.75% charge rate, right? However, since the minimum guaranteed rate is, or the net effective rate is a 0.57%, basically technically a wash loan. Um, and after year 11 plus uh, on cost basis, uh, that drops down to the 2%, which then ultimately becomes a 100% a wash loan. So basically the loan is uh, not charged any kind of interest rate. And from year 11 and so forth, uh, same thing. It's basically a wash loan, a tax-free wash loan because loans are not taxed. Uh, that is the one of the beauties of the access of the tax advantage to the vehicle. So loans, withdrawals and death benefit, accelerations will reduce the policy value and a death benefit. God forbid someone is diagnosed by a doctor with some terminal illness, uh, they can have an accelerated death benefit so they have access to the insurance side of the, of the product. Uh, modified, uh, so provided the policy is not and does not become a modified endowment contract, which is not why you would wanna get these, uh, that would mean that it's a tax deferred vehicle, not a tax advantage vehicle. Modified endowment contracts are tax deferred, not tax advantage like the FFIO is. Withdrawals are tax-free to the extent that they do not exceed the policy basis. Generally, premiums paid less withdrawals and two policy loans are tax-free as long as the policy remains in force. So as long as the vehicle is in force, anything within the vehicle is tax advantage. If the policy of surrender elapses, the amount of the policy loan would be considered a distribution from the policy and will be taxable to the extent that the loan plus other distributions at the time exceed the policy basis. Uh, giving you flexibility and control. Flexible premium payments. So premiums may increase, decrease, skip, or altogether 
if there is enough policy value. So if the account has a lot of uh, accumulated value within, basically, um, technically, uh, the premiums are covered by that uh, policy value. Of course, the risk of the policy uh, lapsing increases if you do not at least regularly uh, pay the premiums equal to the current monthly uh, no lapse premium. Uh, security of no lapse guarantee. Uh, premiums of the minimum monthly no lapse premium ensure that the policy will remain in force. However, by paying only the minimum monthly premium, you may be foregoing the opportunity to build up additional policy value. Minimum monthly premium is basically the cost of insurance because this vehicle is also an insurance. Well, this vehicle is also a insurance policy that has a death benefit, and that death death benefit has a cost of insurance. Right, it's not for free. Uh, so no lapse period, issue age 0 through 45, 20 years, issue age 46 through 60 until age 65, issue age 61 plus, five years. Um, so after the no lapse period, or if the cumulative minimum monthly no lapse premium requires a not met, then fluctuations in interest rates and other policy charges may require the payment of additional premium to keep the policy in force. Guarantees are based on claims paying ability of the company. So if you ever consider one of these vehicles, you want to make sure it's a strong financial institution. In this case, Transamerica is. Um, because if you're using um, a sketchy provider that is not historically known for being financially fit and strong and, and has... Um, uh, a a a, uh, cor uh, a board of directors and so forth and executives that make smart decisions like we saw back in 2008 with AIG that almost went under, then potentially your policy can be at risk. But in this case, the beauty of it is Transamerica has been around for 120 years and has never had any financial issues, which is pretty amazing considering um, the time they've been around. Uh, so putting it all together, basically, um, flexible premium payments, owner controlled, less uh, premium expense charge, net premium allocation choices, which is the global index, S&P 500, or the basic interest account. Policy value, tax deferred accumulation, less index account, monthly charge, monthly deduction, cost of insurance, monthly policy charge, per unit charge, additional rider. Additional riders is basically additional benefits you can add on to these vehicles, such as long-term care. Long-term care is basically disability protection. God forbid someone becomes disabled for 90 days or more. They actually have access to uh, the death benefit from the moment um, that that rider becomes in force. Uh, distributions, living benefits, withdrawals, possibly loans, terminal illness, acceleration, accelerated, God forbid someone that has this one of these vehicles become terminally ill. They act, they have access to the death benefit while they're alive. Uh, death benefit rider, um, death benefits, federal income tax free proceeds paid at death to beneficiaries, and not included in its in the estate of the individual, which is um, something I always like to point out. Early policy surrender surrender charges may apply, and any gain is uh, taxable if surrendered. That means if you remove the vehicle, the uh, a cash accumulated value within the vehicle that was then removed is open to being taxed because the vehicle is no longer around to protect the funds from being tax advantaged. If the policy is surrendered or lapses, the amount of the policy loan will be considered a distribution from the policy and will be taxable to the extent that such loans plus other distributions at that time exceed the policy basis. Um, the surrender charge is a charge for each $1,000 of the initial face amounts of each increase in face amount. Uh, the surrender charge applies for the first 15 years and for the 15 years from the date of any face amount increase. Uh, so basically, here's where the riders come into play, customize your coverage, optional riders provide versatility, options to individual uh, to individualize your policy. So these are add-ons you could add on to these um, vehicles, right? 
A terminal illness accelerated uh, death benefit riders. These are always uh, advisable because they don't add any additional um, fees to the vehicle. Uh, the, this rider is uh, basically automatically included in the policy, chronically ill accelerated death benefit rider. Uh, so basically, uh, so for the terminal illness, should you receive a terminal illness diagnosis, it would allow access to a portion of death benefit while you are alive. Uh, chronically illness accelerated death benefit rider, the chronically illness rider allows access to a portion of the death benefit and provide the benefit payment if you are diagnosed with a qualifying chronic, chronic illness. The chronic illness rider must be elected at the time of application. Uh, the long-term care rider and, and, and chronic illness rider are not available uh, on the same policy. Chronic illness is uh, typically automatically included in the policy as well. Uh, critical illness accelerated death benefit uh, rider allows access to a portion of the death benefit if you are diagnosed with a qualifying critical illness. Critical illness rider must be elected at the time of application. Uh, overloan protection rider, these are actually these is where the additional add-ons for riders come into play because um, these don't typically come with the policy, the ones that I described above do. Uh, overloan protection rider, the OPR can help uh, prevent a policy lapse caused by outstanding loans. Uh, exercising this rider can prevent any loans from being taxable while still providing a small death benefit to your beneficiaries. A guaranteed insurability benefit rider allows you to increase your life insurance coverage at certain intervals with a, the need uh, for additional underwriting. Not available in Puerto Rico. Uh, base insured rider provides an additional level term insurance coverage at term insurance rates. So it adds another additional term insurance uh, 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 policy onto the FFIUL. A children benefit rider provides fixed rate term insurance coverage for children between the ages of 15 days and 18 years old. The cool thing about these, um, a 15 year old baby has the ability to um, uh, have one of these policies, which then creates, uh, uh, for example, a scenario where maybe parents want to save for the college and so forth. They have the ability to do that. Um, babies as old as 15 days. Additional insured rider, premium level term insurance coverage for up to five years of your family members, accidental death benefit rider, which this um, actually does uh, come included with the uh, original policy, pays the face amount of the rider if your death is the result of an accidental bodily, bodily injury. Disability waiver, waiver of monthly deduction rider waivers the month the policy monthly deduction should you become disabled not available in Puerto Rico disability waiver of premium rider if you become disabled it waives the premium the monthly premiums for the duration of the disability by applying the rider benefits shown in the policy as the pre policy's premiums payments income protection uh, a rider uh, allows you to structure the death benefit to fit the short and long-term needs for your family. Choose an initial lump sum, a guaranteed monthly income stream for up to 25 years, a lump sum, or a combination of the three. Concierge planning rider, concierge planning benefit. This uh, would be, God forbid, someone passes away or an individual that owns this policy. It actually allows them to um, cover their funeral expenses or any expenses uh, they would need to uh, arrange during that that uh, scenario. This rider is available on policies with the faith of faith amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars or higher, and not on direct monthly bill uh, direct bill monthly. This is no direct cost rider. Uh, provides access to the full suite of services offered by Everest Funeral Package. Everest services include, include help with planning a funeral, document storage, access to will preparation tools, and more. Uh, so those are some of the writers that are basically um, can be utilized and added on to uh, the FFIUL, along with the ones that um, come with it, right? Uh, so uh, details um, on uh, the FFIUL, uh, issue age, anywhere between zero to 85 years old, anywhere between zero to 75 years old in Florida as of last birthday, 
Um, underwriting classifications, these are basically risk class classifications given to the owner of the policy, depending on health, age, and so forth. So preferred elite non-tobacco is the, I, the highest possible rating. Um, then comes preferred plus non-tobacco, then preferred non-tobacco, then non-tobacco, then preferred tobacco for someone that's a smoker, then tobacco and juvenile for anyone under the age of 18. Uh, face amounts uh, are uh, a choice of the individual, of course. Um, band one, 25,000 to 999,000. Band two, 100,000 to 249,999. Band three, 250,000 up to 499,999. And band four, 500,000 and up. Uh, death benefit options, uh, level, which is the face amount, basically the, uh, from the moment the policy is approved on the owner of the policy, the face amount, which is the death benefit, never changes, it stays level. Increasing face amount plus policy value. Uh, so the, the FFIOS, basically I like to uh, paint the picture of it having two buckets. One bucket is the uh, death benefit, one bucket is the cash accumulation of the account that grows at the rate of return of the index it is it is used as benchmark, whether S&P 500, uh, uh, the global index, or the um, basic interest. Um, so whatever a cash uh, accumulation grows within the account bucket just gets added on top of the death benefit. So the death benefit continues to grow along with the cash value of the account. And then graded basically same as in as the increasing option up to age 70, um, grading uh, to the level option from age 71 to age 95. So basically it's increasing the death benefit th uh, uh, throughout the life of the policy up to the individual reaches age 70, then it turns into a level option um, from age 71 up to so forth, age 95. Uh, these amounts may increase uh, to meet IRS guidelines, um, policy value. So there is a guarantee, no guarantee minimum policy value. Policy value may lapse if you do not have sufficient policy value to pay the monthly deduction, the index monthly charge and surrender charges and or any outstanding loans and accrued interest, uh, loan interest. The policy value is comprised of the value of the basic interest account, the S&P 500, or the global index account, and the policy loan reserve. Cash surrender value, if you surrender your policy, the cash surrender value of the policy is equal to the policy value less any applicable surrender charges in any loan balances. Surrender charge, uh, uh, the charge per $1,000 of the initial face amount and of each increase in the face amount period for the charge. The surrender charges applies for the first 15 years of the policy for 15 years from the date of any face amount increase. Basic for charge, face amount insured, issued age, gender, and risk classification. These charges may be sufficient and should be carefully considered before surrendering the contract. A surrender charge may result in the cash surrender value of the policy being zero. As a result, the policy is not intended for short-term savings or short-term insurance need. Excess index interest is not credited for partial years at the time of surrender of any index account segment. So these are long-term investment vehicles uh, or long-term uh, products, not short-term, uh, basically. Uh, so um, here we're going uh, deep into the intricacies of this monthly deduction. The monthly deduction includes the cost of insurance, monthly policy fee per unit charge, rider costs, and that would be for if you add on any additional riders um, into the vehicle and any charges for substandard classification rate because based on health, age, and so forth, depending on the health rating, Someone that is unhealthier has a higher cost of insurance than if someone that is really healthy has a lesser cost of insurance because they're less of a risk to the insurance company because the insurance company ultimately is liable to have to um, pay the death benefit, God forbid, the owner of the policy passes away. So monthly deductions are taken from the basic interest account, S&P 500 index account or global index account in proportion to the value of those accounts on the monthly policy date that deduction is taken within each account. Monthly deductions are taken pro rata across segments within each account. 
cost of insurance charges. Cost of insurance charges vary based on the insured's age, underwriting classification, gender, and the policy's uh, face amount and duration. Monthly policy fee, current $10, uh, guaranteed minimum $12. Guaranteed minimum is the maximum allowed as per laws and regulations. That's something I added on there um, to kind of add a little bit of more information per unit charge, a charge per thousands of face amounts of the face amounts of the, ba of the base policy and additional insured rider. Uh, the changes vary by gender, tobacco use, age of the insured and the face amount ban. Based on the current basis, the charge applies for 10 years for the issue of 10 years from the date of any face amount increase and remain level over the over the 10 year period. On a guaranteed basis, the charge remain level and apply in all years. Air, the, this charge applies to any additional insured rider for 10 years for the rider issue date and 10 years from the date of any increases in the rider face amount. Index account monthly charge, 0.06%. Um, and 0.72% uh, annually of the index account value taken on a monthly policy date through the age of 120, pro rata by account value, then pro rata across segments for each account. Withdrawals, minimum $500, minimum cash surrender value minus 500, charge no fees on withdrawals, excess index interest for a segment period will not be credited on the amount taken as withdrawals from an index account segment prior to the end of the segment period. Loans, minimum $500, maximum policy value minus the loan balance, minimum uh, minus uh, the loan interest that will be accrued prior to the next anniversary, minus the greater or the surrender charge of the two monthly deductions. Availability after the free look period ends, which the free look period is 10 days from the uh, date of the issuance of the policy agreement. Access index interest segment prior to the end of the segment period. Um, let me just disconnect this here. Uh, so yeah, uh, after the free look period ends, which is a 10 day period uh, that is called the free look period, um, excess in index interest for a segment period will not be credited on the amount taken as withdrawals from a loan uh, from an index account segment prior to the end of the segment period. Uh, why Transamerica expedited claims? So this is why the Transamerica stands out on the qualifying FFIO policies. A portion of the death benefit may be paid to your beneficiaries in as little as 72 hours from the time the required paperwork is received and is in good order. Transamerica expedient claims process can pay up to $25,000 of the total death benefit to cover funeral related or any other expenses that may arise, subject, subject to qualification and two-year contestability period. Over 100 years of serving families, Transamerica has stood uh, for innovation since 1904, uh, when uh, the, a young entrepreneur named Amedio P. Giannini founded, the bank, uh, founded a bank in San Francisco to make financial services available to everyone. Today, Transamerica encourages our customers to consider their long-term health in pursuit of their financial success, because just like planning and saving, we believe uh, the little steps we take today make a big difference tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that is uh, basically a uh, breakdown of the uh, FFIUL. Um, and uh, with that being said, I'll leave you guys with a market quote. So uh, though he tends to make his initial purchase before the stock has bottom and likes the opportunity to add to his position at lower prices, he also sleeps better at night knowing that if there is a cliff out there, his shares have already fallen over it. Um, and that is by Walter uh, Schloss. And um, yeah, uh, if you like, what I've shared with you guys today and would like to hear more, uh, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And thank you guys for your time. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.